Hey guys, the Green 8-Ball here. I'm a variety streamer on Twitch and YouTube. One of my favorite games to play, do challenge runs, and just promote on my channel is Fire Emblem. It's, it's the greatest game ever. Greatest series ever, for me at least. And my favorite character has got to be Garrick, the legendary character from Sacred Stones, you know, the slayer of all mankind. He's a legend. I love the guy. So when I heard at E3 2018 that a new Fire Emblem game, Three Houses, was coming out, I was pumped. I'm ready to stream it, ready to take on a new challenge on my channel. It's going to be great. Fast forward to January, which is this month, and we still don't know much about this new Fire Emblem that is supposedly coming out in quarter one of 2019. Uh, it's 2019. I'm looking at my watch. You guys can't see that. So I don't know what the heck happened to Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's, it's just disappeared. Is it still coming out in 2019? It says on the website it is. I pre-ordered it. I sure hope it is. Uh, so, Jesus. You guys are a tight deadline here. Uh, where's the other gameplay trailers? I, I, I wish I knew more about the game I was already, you know, bought. But I just know nothing about it. We've seen one gameplay trailer of approximately like two minutes, I think in like 20 seconds. Where we're introduced to the lords and like your player character that you make. But other than that, you don't really know how it's going to be played. What kind of like classes, system it's going to be on. So we're, we're lacking serious information on this. So why is there such a little information on this game? If this is supposed to be a big title for the Switch coming out in 2019, for Nintendo specifically, I don't know why they're being so discreet about it. They could be much more revealing, at least hint towards gameplay or something. Character art, another trailer, gameplay, footage, anything. Anything at all would just be great to know. So we're going to have to travel back in time a little bit and uh, bring up some images of some characters and other games that Intelligent Systems has released. So here we go. Right series, um, a little bit, you know, prehistoric right here. As you can tell, he's, uh, he's really a fashion faux pas right there. Um, phew, hurts to look at. Okay, a little more recent than that. Okay. Uh, I like his groin plate. It's a step up. He's got armor on instead of, you know, a skirt. So he's protecting it. Uh, the goods down there. Uh, surely we can get something else more recent. Ah, yes. Right there. That's our guy. Uh, young, youthful protagonist brimming with potential. Fighting in a war. Wearing coward armor, I guess. And has weapons? All jokes aside. All jokes aside. Most of us know that that is Andy, the star of the Advance Wars series, released by Intelligence Systems in 2001. As you can tell by this map, they're closely linked series, Fire Emblem and Advance Wars. I mean, look at the GBA sprites, the colored armies, the terrain right there. It's not hard to assume that Japan was kind of using Advance Wars as a demo for a strategic game in America. And jury is out if we pass. I mean, I don't think many people beat Kanbei's error. I really don't. And the game itself was still really tough. Uh, so if I had to rate America probably on Advance Wars and how we did, even though we like weapons and such and wars, I think we probably got a C+. Uh, it's a C+. Strong C+, and that gets a degree. Uh, so thank you to Advance Wars for making Fire Emblem what it is today. However, in doing so, we had to, to lose a valuable member of the Intelligence Systems core right here. And Advance Wars passed away uh, on 2008 with Days of Ruin. And we haven't heard another game from it since. So rest in peace, Advance Wars 2001 to 2008. Goodbye, my sweet prince. Um, but for, for Fire Emblem to come out, you had to die. The other series that is alive and, well, what might be considered a smash hit. Super Smash Bros. Melee for the GameCube. I know, I know. How can a fighting game influence the future of a strategy RPG? Well, Melee came out in 2001 and had a huge list of characters to beat the living hell out of your other favorite characters. Game & Watch versus Mewtwo, you know, Luigi versus Ice Climbers, those top tier favorite characters. Uh, it featured everybody. And it also featured this anime swordsman and his red-headed twin. Uh, wait, who the fuck are these guys again? Smash players soon found out more about these unknown characters. Marth quickly became popular because he was a high-tier character and a top player, Ken, 
dominated every tournament with him. Roy, on the other hand, while quite terrible in melee, and incidentally, his own Fire Emblem game, Binding Blade, premiered in Smash Brothers even before his own game came out in Japan. These two lords gained a ton of popularity from appearing in the mega hit melee, and players and fans were wondering when they would see their own Fire Emblem game in America to play as these guys. We didn't have to wait long, however, as Fire Emblem Blazing Sword, the seventh title in the series, finally came to North America in 2003. See, this game stars a dapper Roy, a jacked axe-wielding Marth, and I'm kind of blanking on the female in front, but I'm sure she's important to the plot. In all seriousness, Ellie Wood, Hector, and Lynn, respectively, were series staples, and despite being unknown characters at the time, the game sold rather well in North America and solidified Fire Emblem as a game for the entire world. Speaking of sales, we're going to start comparing Fire Emblem games and how they did in America. Please keep in mind that these are estimated sales. I will say for the most part, the marketing for Fire Emblem games is... Uh... How should I put it? Well, just watch this video for Blazing Sword and you'll get what I'm talking about here. The drums of war are beating. No man can be trusted. What happened to Dorcas? I put poison in his mutton. <laughs> Build an army. Trust nobody. Fire Emblem. Only on Game Boy Advance. Rated everyone. Game Boy. I think the vid speaks for itself. Intelligent Systems has, well, interesting methods to sell their Fire Emblem games. And that'll be important as we go down the list of other Fire Emblem games released in North America. The next GBA game to be released is Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. Nothing too crazy here. Similar sales to 7 and not much really to talk about. It did well. Path of Radiance is next, and this is where things take a drastic turn. You see, Path of Radiance came out for the GameCube in 2005, and we are going to have to do something special in order to address its low sales. Over on the left here, we have console data and how much each console sold in comparison to each other. The most notable thing on this list is the GameCube sales. The GameCube came out in 2001, and despite the cult following of games that appeared on it, it did not sell well. Specifically compare it to the Game Boy Advance, the 3DS, the DS, the Wii, other games that the Fire Emblem series has appeared on. Now I'm not saying that the system a game appears on is the only reason sales are hurt, improved, affected, but in this specific case I truly believe that appearing on the GameCube console hurt Path of Radiance sales significantly. This is 2005, near the end of the GameCube's lifespan when other people are looking to update to the next generation of consoles. Fire Emblem games, and I'm going to insert a personal opinion here, are much more at home on a mobile system. On a home console with a controller, it just doesn't click. The map is weird, the movements are erratic. It just doesn't match well for a Fire Emblem game. And this is coming from someone whose favorite Fire Emblem game is Path of Radiance. So start with an already low selling system at the end of its life cycle, like the GameCube, mix it with a Fire Emblem console mechanic, and sprinkle it all off with Intelligent Systems' questionable marketing strategies, and you have a recipe for a dud in the sales. Radiant Dawn, the direct sequel to Path of Radiance, came out in 2007 for the Wii, and had even worse sales than its predecessor. We all know for a fact that the Wii is one of the best-selling home consoles, so we can't fault the system in this case. I do, however, think this further proves that something is wrong with Fire Emblem being on a console, like using the motion control in the Wii's case right here, and it's just a little wacky in terms of moving your units and moving around the menu, or that the marketing for this game and Path of Radiance just wasn't there from Intelligence Systems. Unfortunately, it doesn't get much better for Fire Emblem. The first DS game, Shadow Dragon, a remake of the first Fire Emblem game, came out in 2010 and finally showcased Marth in his home series. This game barely sold better than the console titles before it, and if I had to guess why it only sold slightly better, was that it was on a handheld system as opposed to a console. A key note as well is that the tone, style, and gameplay was drastically different than the GBA games that sold so well. We have to question again if it's the marketing that's causing these Fire Emblem games to sell so poorly. The next Fire Emblem game, New Mystery of the Emblem, was only released in Japan, most likely due to the poor sales of the previous three installments. It looked grim that the rest of the world would receive another Fire Emblem game, 
Uh, as we know by this list, that's not the case. And with the new game that comes out, it's the biggest change in Fire Emblem since FE7 came out worldwide. Enter Fire Emblem 13, Fire Emblem Awakening. This game easily had the best marketing out of any game in the series, probably because it could have been the last one released anywhere. In fact, it was widely known, as stated by the producer of the game, that Fire Emblem Awakening was supposed to be the series' swan song. But this game sold too well for the series to end here. This game is well known for being more appealing to a wider audience, and adding marriage options as well as the ability to pair off your units and have a second generation of kids fighting in a war. Intelligent Systems had found what sells. Sometimes, it's waifus over tactics. Combine that with the high console sales of the 3DS, and you now have a solidified Nintendo franchise. It should be noted that Awakening is the first game in the series to include DLC. And while I don't want to discuss my opinions on that here, it should be noted because it does influence the franchise for all future titles. Fire Emblem Awakening crushed it in sales, and by using similar but updated features at the cost of a coherent story, Fire Emblem Fates was quick to follow. Fates offered a unique approach. It tried to appeal to Awakening newcomers while also welcoming back series veterans with different routes, Birthright and Conquest, and later Revelations. While they had some similar character uh, design choices, I see you missed your big sister. <laughs> this is the best selling Fire Emblem game of all time, and the best selling strategy role playing game of all time. And whether or not the triple route system is the reason for the high sales, you can bet that intelligent systems will always look back to fates to find out what sells their games. It is probably why it is Fire Emblem 3 houses as opposed to Fire Emblem 2 houses. 3 sells more. The last FE game to come out is Shadows of Valentia, which is a remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden, the second Fire Emblem. Again, just like Shadow Dragon before it, it too took a classic look at Fire Emblem, changing the art style and removing the marriage and pair-up system. Just like Shadow Dragon before it, FE15 sold quite poorly in comparison to other Fire Emblem games. Maybe in part because of these gameplay choices, the awful season pass they offered, or the egregious map design. Special shout out to the swamp map with Cantor's mocking me as I trudge through a mound of poison. This being the last FE game before Three Houses comes out could spell a revert to Awakening and Fates like gameplay, stories, and characters, and possibly even limiting the amount of remakes we will see in the future. What we do know is based off these previous Fire Emblem games is that the marketing is something that the Fire Emblem series can't seem to get consistently right. This brings us to Fire Emblem Three Houses, which was announced at E3 2018, scheduled to be released quarter one of 2019. We know very little about this game. In fact, uh, I reckon I know more about the Loch Ness Monster than I know about this game. And I have it pre-ordered. I'm, I'm still confused what I bought. I mean, I could have actually bought an actual charred symbol instead of a Fire Emblem game. I don't know. Is it going to be similar like Fates and Awakening with a pair-up system and a razor focus on marriages and supports? Or is it going to be like bringing something new to the table in hopes of striking gold? Recent sales suggest that they will adhere to the newer fan base they collected from Fates and Awakening rather than appeasing to the old guard. I can certainly say I'm nervous because this game really needs to do well for my beloved series to continue. And the fact that we know less about this game either means it's getting pushed back or they potentially aren't confident with what they have to show. This brings me to what I would want to see from Intelligent Systems to make me confident in Three Houses. Release this game on a living console. I don't want another Path of Radiance situation where the game comes out on a hospice console. Luckily, it is coming out on the Switch, which is already doing extremely well and gives Fire Emblem a chance to make a good name for itself as a Nintendo staple. Strike this one off the list. Next, I would like an additional gameplay trailer, or site information regarding release data, character info, or specific gameplay features. Most importantly is clarity on when this game is actually going to be released. Even leaking out additional soundtracks and art concepts helps us to get excited to learn and experience the world of Three Houses. 
The more buzz you can stir up about your game, especially if it's in the same quarter of when it's supposed to be released, the more people will be interested in buying it. And if you announce a season pass before any of this happens, I'll just uh, raise the white flag for you guys. How about that one? Lastly, and I know I might catch some flack for this, I would like to see a Three Houses character represented in Smash Brothers as a DLC character. Whether you like it or not, Smash helps merchandise your characters, and Smash Ultimate is the perfect stage to help sell Nintendo's characters. I get it. I get it. I, I honestly do. There's around, you know, 24 sword fighting Fire Emblem characters already in Smash, but hear me out. We could easily throw in an Axe Fighter in the mix. Uh, <coughs> Hector. Hector. With a unique style, and at the same time promote a game that is coming around the corner. What do you know? A new character from Three Houses, Edelgard, fits that role perfectly. And just like Martha and Roy before her, she can premiere in Smash with an axe to grind. At the very minimum, if not Smash Brothers, at least tease your Three Houses characters in Fire Emblem Heroes, so you can at least hit your specific target audience with that choice. If Intelligent Systems could enact some of these changes that I and, believe me, many other content creators have suggested, it would go a long way to put fans at ease, myself included. This has been the Green 8-Ball giving us Fire Emblem Dots. You can catch me and more of my content on my Twitch channel. I also guest star on a game show that currently runs weekly, discussing game news. It's called Around the Monitor. Feel free to check it out. Don't be afraid to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys playing Fire Emblem Three Houses in 2019. Resurrect Advance Wars, please. Please?